everybody, welcome back to TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Again, it's TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. If you're on the blog, make sure you subscribe. Follow me on all the social networks. All that stuff you've heard before, or maybe you haven't, which is why I'm saying it again. Um, so yeah, the way this works is you send me your questions. You can either email me, Dan at TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Or call or text me 949-415-6256 and I will, if it's a good question, I'll make a video about it. If it's a not so good question, first of all, that's all very subjective, um, I will still reply back and try to give you an answer, try to help you out, because that's what I do, okay? It keeps me in business. So let me get into this question. This is from someone who just started at a research clinic. They're relatively new and they've been throwing a bunch of tasks. So let's read the question first and then go through the answer, okay? My manager gives me an Excel spreadsheet of 300 patients and tells me to pre-screen patients from our database to see if they meet our inclusion-exclusion criteria. Um, as I've been going through my Excel spreadsheets uh, and looking at their charts, uh, most of them look like they would uh, not qualify, okay? And I'm trying to say this without giving away what protocol it is. So, our SIV is scheduled next Monday, and I was told I cannot contact patients to pre-screen them. Uh, I don't know why you've been told that. What should I do? Do you know the legal things I can say to patients over the phone without saying anything illegal? Uh, I hope I'm making sense. Any information to help me pre-screen patients is super appreciated. So, You've been told to contact patients to pre-screen them. Uh, oh no, you've been told that you cannot contact patients to pre-screen them. Do you know the legal things I can say to patients over the phone without saying anything illegal? So I'm confused because if you've been told not to call them, then why would you worry about what's legal and illegal to say? So let's just assume that you are going to call them because you can't really pre-screen a patient. You could look through their charts. That's one way to pre-screen a patient. And by working at the PI's private practice, and if he gives you the right to look through their charts, you can do that, okay? Ultimately, the, he's following, he has to be compliant with HIPAA laws, and he sees that that is just part of his practice, and that you are involved uh, in the pre-screening process. So that's fine. Now, if you begin in a database of 300 patients, obviously you've got to go through the ones first that would not qualify. So it seems like you found the majority of them don't qualify. So that now eliminates your list, let's say, by 80%. You can get rid of 80% of the pre-screening uh, patients from the database. So now that leaves you 20%. The 20% that might qualify, um, that you still have to look into, that you, not, first of all, have to find out if they're in, interested in participating in a study. So here's the way it works best, because these patients probably don't know who you are, okay? So what I would do, and this is what I've done in the past, there's two ways you can go about it. You can either directly call the patients, although you're risking the fact that they may not be interested, or what you can better do is flag them. So literally put a sticky note in their chart, or if it's an electronic chart, find a way to put a comment, or print out their face sheet, from the electronic record, put a sticky note on it, and hand it to the doctor. So basically your doctor is telling you, without explaining it so well, at least from what I can understand, let me know which patients qualify, and then I'll call them. That's At least that's what I'm thinking. Now, having your SIV, that's a totally separate discussion, but oftentimes sponsors will want to have some kind of pre-screening sheet uh, with a database of patients that it, where their information is de-identified, of course, but they want to see that you've gone through the, these pre-screening activities. So I wouldn't be surprised if the sponsor has some kind of pre-screening form that you've got to fill out once a week and fax to them, and they're probably going to start at the SIV because you've already had your site selection visit, you've already been given the study, so now the SIV is the last step really until you can start screening. So if they're coming in on that Monday, they're going to want to know that Tuesday, the very next day, that you have somebody to screen. And that's what they're, going to, that's what they're looking for when they're giving you this pre-screening sheet. 
So that's what I would do. I would go ahead and fill out the, any pre-screening form that they have given you, that the sponsor has given you. If they didn't give you one, I would go ahead and create one anyways, just a simple Excel sheet like the one you already have, and eliminate the subjects that don't qualify and only go through the ones that do, flag each and every one of them, and don't look for reasons to screen fill them at this point. Just look for ones who you think have the possibility of qualifying, because the ones that you find that are perfectly suited for the study are usually the same ones who you either will not be able to reach or will not be interested in doing the study. So you really need as many as possible for your doctor to either personally call or give you permission to call them, or better yet, speak to them at their next office visit. Most patients come in on a monthly basis, quarterly at most, depending on the specialty. Uh, your specialty is dermatology, so probably quarterly. So you may get lucky and have some of them coming in to see your doctor um, in the near future, and those he may want to speak to face to face, and he's going to forget unless they're flagged, and then you're going to have to put in your calendar and you're going to have to coordinate this with the receptionist or whoever is in charge of scheduling patients at your office. Flag me when this patient's coming in so I can prepare the doctor because they're busy. They probably have 50 patients a day or more. They're not going to remember that this patient coming in at 11.15 potentially qualifies for a study and I need to talk to them. That's your job, okay? So that's what you need to do. This is what works. You can also go the other route and bypass the doctor entirely and call every patient yourself and introduce yourself as someone who works with the doctor at the office and the doctor suggested that you might be interested in a clinical trial. That might work. You also risk the fact that they don't trust you or know who you are and uh, they much rather hear this and trust it a lot more coming from their doctor. But if your doctor doesn't have time or you just want to get it over with, um, call them first and then have your doctor follow up with the ones who said maybe or no later. That can work too. So that's what I would do. Hopefully this helps. Hopefully this helps other people out there on how to pre-screen patients from your PI's private practice. Um, and I got a second question which is going to be a Snapchat only answer. Sorry, I'm really trying to hack the game. So you got to go follow me at Snapchat, username Dan Svera, for this question which I'm going to answer now, right? Uh, and I'll read you the question. Uh, I'm working at a CRO. We have annual training plans that I need to come up with. Can you propose some ideas for what you think your suggestions are uh, in regards to creating uh, extra training, additional training for our CRO? So if you want to hear that answer, you got to go to Snapchat. All right, this is Dan Sfera from theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Take care.